Okay, welcome back again. We're almost done this problem now. It's uh, taking a little while, but we're going through a lot of different uh, aspects of this regression problem. So what we've got now, here's our, our estimated regression equation uh, right up at the top here. We've filled in our regression output. So we have our coefficients, we've done our hypothesis testing, we've done our confidence interval estimates. Let's now fill in this ANOVA. Now this is going to be a little bit easier, I think, to fill it in. Um, the calculations are a little bit simpler. So let's, uh, let's start actually at regression statistics and we'll just kind of bounce around. We'll probably get all of this done. So in this first table up at the top here, what can we fill in? Well, observations. We know we have five observations, right? So here's one, two, three, four, five. That one's easy enough. We need that one because for the ANOVA table, we have to deal with our degrees of freedom. Uh, and this sounds familiar, I think, from if you've watched any of the videos in module 13, uh, there's always been these degrees of freedom to deal with. So formulas for degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom regression. This is going to sound familiar too, I think. For the degrees of freedom and regression, this is going to be k minus 1. Now, from the module 13, you had programmed in your mind k was the number of treatments when we were doing those ANOVA exercises. Now, k is the number of estimated coefficients. Estimated coefficients. So in our regression here, and in a simple linear regression, k is equal to 2. There's a y-intercept down here, and there's the slope coefficient. So we've estimated two betas, b is beta 0, beta 1. So k is equal to 2. So k minus 1 in this exercise, I have 1 degree of freedom. As we complete that row, these, these formulas are all the same as any other ANOVA that you've done. So here are MS r, so that's mean squared regression, is equal to SSR divided by its degrees of freedom k minus 1. So in this exercise, that's just one degree of freedom in the, in the denominator. So this is 1723.56. So that one's relatively straightforward. Degrees of freedom for error. This also is going to sound familiar. This is n minus k. n, the number of observations. k, the number of coefficients. So this is 5 minus 2. So we have 3 degrees of freedom here. For our sum of squares error now. So here what we have, we're, we're given MSE which is SSE divided by its degrees of freedom n minus k. And we have MSE is 139.75 and we have degrees of freedom is 3 so we just need to solve this for MS, uh, so sorry for SSE. So that's just going to be 139.75 times 3. I'll just get my calculator out. This is an easy one. So 139.75 times 3, 419 and a quarter. So this is 419.25. And then we can fill in for total. So this degrees of freedom, this is n minus 1 is 4. And sum of squares total, we just add up sum of squares regression and error, so this is 1723.56 plus 419.25, so 2142.8, 2142.8, okay, good. F statistic, same as always, mean square regression over MSE, so this is going to be 1723.56 over 139.75. Okay, so this can stay there. 1723.56 divided by 139.75. So 12.3. Oops. 12.3. Okay, well, that's 
That all sounds about right. And we have actually an interesting relationship uh, between our T statistic and our F statistic in a simple linear case. I'll, I'll show you that. I'll show you why in a second. But look at our T statistic down here is 3.5. Just for fun, if I take 3.5 and if I square it, what do we get? 12 and a quarter. Okay, so there's a little bit of rounding error in there. Uh, but there's a distinct, there's a, a, a very clear relationship between our test statistic for the intercept and for our F test. And I'll show you that in a second, uh, why that's of any value. So when we perform the test, here's our, our, our hypothesis test for the regression. So the first test that we did, the T test, were for individual coefficients. So they were testing individual intercept and individual slope are they statistically different from zero? The F test now is testing for model significance. Now, this will become more relevant when we do module 15, which is a multiple regression. In, in module 15, what this F test will be testing, if I allow myself, if we have a, a model that looks like this, instead of just one X, I have two or three, or four, this is what we'll be getting into in module uh, 15. Well, the F test is testing for model significance, which means it's testing to see is B1 equal to B2 equal to B3, uh, and they're all simultaneously equal to zero. The alternative, not all, are zero. So this is in a, a multiple regression setting. The F test is testing are all of those coefficients simultaneously equal to zero. Well, in a simple linear case, which is what we're doing, we don't have x3, b3, we don't have x2, b2, all we have is b1. And so what happens here is that this test, the F test in a simple linear regression, is exactly the same as a T test in a simple linear regression. And because we're testing exactly the same thing, although we have it, we're using a different approach to it, we had better get exactly the same results. If, if this T test tells us that, you know, beta one is statistically different from zero, our F test, which is effectively the same set of hypotheses, it had better give us that same conclusion. So here our F statistic is 12.33. We have a distribution with one degree of freedom in the numerator and three degrees of freedom in the denominator. Now this is why there's that distinct relationship between our T test and our F test, is that if we have a T statistic with three degrees of freedom, well, let's generalize this. If this is k and t is k, these will always be equal. As long as that f distribution has one degree of freedom in the numerator and k degrees of freedom in the denominator, it will always be equal to the square of the t statistic with k degrees of freedom. So that's just a little bit of the, the uniqueness of a simple linear regression is that there's a very distinct relationship between our test statistics and we will always get exactly the same results to our test. So let's go to our F tables. We have one degree of freedom numerator, three degrees of freedom denominator. So here's, uh, let me scroll up here, oops, where am I? So denominator is three, numerator is one, our test statistic was 12.3. So our test statistic is, let's see, somewhere in between here. And so our p-value is somewhere in between here, 0.025 and 0.05. So here I have simply that our p-value is less than 0.05. Right? That's about as close as we can get with this information here. So, we get the same conclusion. Now, because I have the, 
the answers in front of me. I've got my Excel spreadsheet open here in front of me. We can actually see, and if you wanted to calculate these yourselves on your computer, these are both exactly the same to every decimal place, these, um, these p-values. Given the limitation of our tables, we can't get that kind of precision. But anyways, at least here we get the same conclusions. We would reject that null hypothesis. Not all of them are zero. Uh, and so we have the same finding that x is a valid predictor of y. Let's fill in the rest of our regression statistics here. So we have uh, our observations, standard error. So this standard error, this came up in a, an earlier video with the hypothesis testing. This standard error of the estimate is just the square root of MSE. And here we have MSE is right here. So the square root of 139.75 uh, square root is 11.8. Whoops, I need my pen back. So 11.8 is our standard error of the estimate, or standard error of the regression is what we call that. The R squared, the R squared is what we call the measure of goodness of fit, sometimes also called the coefficient of determination. This is the ratio of SSR over SST or 1 minus SSE over SST. Now, this is basically a, a measure of how much of the variation in our dependent variable uh, can we capture with our regression. Remember, SSR is the amount of variation in Y that we capture with our regression. SST is the total variation in Y. So in this case, our SSR Coming from right here, 172356 divided by SST 2142.8. So this gives us, oops, I get that out of the way, 1723.56 divided by 2142.8. So let's call it just 8.8. .8. So what this means is that our regression captures 80% of the variation in Y, right? We can think of it as a percentage. This is the total variation in Y. This is how much my regression captures. So our regression has captured, or our regression explains 80% of the variation in Y. So 80% is pretty high. I'd say that's a pretty strong um, uh, a coefficient of determination. It, it, it captures a significant amount of the data or of the variation in Y. Now there isn't a line drawn in the sand to say th this number is good and this number is bad. All we know is that a higher, uh, a higher number is better. The higher is your R squared, the better is your fit. The better is your regression at capturing or explaining a variation in Y. This formula will always give exactly the same result because this is simply one minus the amount, oops, the amount of variation that your regression fails to capture. So if you capture 80% of it, this is going to be one minus, this will be 0.2. So one minus the 20% that you don't capture, well, that's going to be exactly the same, 80%. Now, the last piece of our puzzle is going to be the multiple R. The multiple R is really um, just a coefficient of correlation between our X and our Y variables. And that multiple R, so the multiple R, this is simply the, 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 the sign of the slope and it's the square root of the r squared. So our r squared is 0.8, our slope is positive, and so this gives us a multiple r uh, 0.8 square root of 0.89 around it, yeah, call it 0.89. So that gives us a measure of the linear correlation between x and y. So this can range between negative 1 and positive 1, 0 of course, meaning there's no correlation between them. 
positive 0.89 is a pretty strong positive correlation. So when one goes up, when x goes up, uh, so too does y. So the more you study, the better is your final grade. Okay, so I think I'm going to end it here. Again, I'm into a 15 minute video. I'll come back and make one last short video to finally respond to part B of this problem. Okay, so I hope that that was helpful. There's a lot here, uh, but uh, it's good practice to get through all of these little bits of this puzzle. Okay, thanks again for watching, and I'll uh, see you again soon. Bye-bye.